We talked about early the 41 conditions, and one of those conditions that isn't on there is chronic pain. And we may ask the question, why? So, who better to talk about that than Dr. Jay Joshi, who is the CEO and Medical Director of the National Pain Centers. So, welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, I'm going to talk about something that's going to be a little different than the rest of the panel. We're not going to talk about the science of cannabis. I'm not going to talk about um, a lot of my patients that have maybe benefited from cannabis or medical cannabis. What I want to talk to you about today is just talk about chronic pain. Talk about what it's like to actually practice as a pain specialist. And some of the problems that we see right now that are limiting our ability to take care of patients. So number one, chronic pain. I'm not going to have you guys raise your hand and say, hey, there's some chronic pain out there. But the statistics say that at least a third of you, sorry to say, but I don't think anyone here is under the age of 21. Uh, at least a third of you, if not more, have some type of chronic pain. That's a lot of people. It has been said that chronic pain is the most difficult condition to manage and treat in medicine. Okay, more difficult than a lot of other conditions. Why? Because there are so many issues with chronic pain, both mental and physical, both organic and inorganic. It requires us to look at the patient as who they are. You know, that includes things like behavioral, psychological, emotional, social, financial. It involves things like therapy, again, whether it's physical therapy or occupational therapy or behavioral therapy. It can involve things like chiropractic, massage, acupuncture, pharmacologic options, opioids or non-opioids. Yeah, opioids are a tool in certain patient populations and can be used safely in certain patient populations. But it goes way beyond that, right? There are many molecules, there are many technologies. I'm not gonna get into all the molecules or technologies, just know there are a lot of different options out there. There are procedures that are out there, both minimally invasive as well as a lot less than minimally invasive. Um, there are major surgical procedures that are out there. There are implantable technologies that are out there, like spinal cord stimulators. Um, long story short, because I know I have only a few minutes, uh, I think some of you know I can talk for an hour. Um, there are a lot of options. So here's the, here's the point. The point is there isn't just one option for everyone. We need tools to be able to take care of this complex problem. Some of those tools include medical cannabis. Uh, and that's what it is. It's a tool in addition to our other tools to help us manage proper patients correctly. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is we are looking at legitimate patients. So legitimate chronic pain patients are not drug addicts. Legitimate chronic pain patients are not people who are trying to sit at home all day and do nothing. Legitimate chronic pain patients, you can just turn to your left and your right, and chances are you're looking at a chronic pain patient right now. Legitimate chronic pain patients are real people that are part of our society, normal people, and they're functional people in our society, for the most part. But occasionally we do have patients where um, you know, they have catastrophic problems and they can't be functional, they have disability, and so on. But these are patients who want legitimate options, legitimate providers, that's a whole other issue, right? These illegitimate pain providers, which we won't talk about today, because again, that's a, another hour discussion. That's a problem that we have seen for a while, and that's a supply-demand problem. There aren't enough legitimate pain providers, so you have a whole bunch of illegitimate pain providers trying to step up to the field. Now, those might be well-meaning people, or maybe not so well-meaning people, and that has been part of this opioid epidemic. Part of it, not all of it, but part of it. Um, the other part of the opioid epidemic has been um, patients. Okay? Some patients have also um, not, you know, they're not legitimate patients. Maybe they're actually specifically looking for medications for illegitimate reasons. And third, illegitimate molecules and technologies. We've seen a lot of counterfeit medications, a lot of substandard medications, and we're seeing that now start to, starting to penetrate the cannabis market. Just in the last week, I don't know if you guys have been reading the newspaper, but we have seen multiple deaths, so two or three now, as well as dozens of ER visits from legal synthetic cannabis. So stuff that you can just get on the street. All right, this is not even medical cannabis. So it's super important that as we go forward that we make sure that 
the medical cannabis in Illinois, which is really one of the best run states for medical cannabis. We could just look at some of the surrounding states in the Midwest who have tried to launch medical cannabis programs, and they haven't done it as well. We've seen problems with, within the, that space. We've seen increased risks or increased rates of patient complications. We've seen increased ER visits, increased car accidents, those kind of things, because they are not as locked down as what we have here. So when we're going to be expanding this program in Illinois, uh, and, and you know we've, we've talked about this before, where chronic pain, chronic pain, right? Chronic pain, pain that is chronic, it's more than three months, it's severe enough that requires around the clock treatment of some type, should be eligible for this program and have proper products, proper products that we know are safe, seed to store, we know that they've been followed, we know that they're not tainted with fentanyl, they're not tainted with um, other illicit medications, which, which we've seen, and they're not like this legal synthetic cannabis that we've seen hit the marketplace, which is which has been laced with rat poison. It's been raised with a vitamin K inhibitor, which is why people were bleeding to death. Uh, we want to make sure that the products that we give our patients are safe, and they don't get hurt from it. So, I look forward to seeing the new proposed bill. I look forward to seeing how we as physicians can expand this program. And I look forward to actually more physicians being more receptive to the fact that there is actual real science with cannabis, which we'll hear from later today. Thank you. Thank you.